Not every Power BI report starts with a pristine, well-structured data source, but that doesn't mean we can't make it look beautiful and ensure optimal performance by addressing critical business questions. All of that using the power of Power Query. In today's tutorial, I guide you through the process of transforming an Excel-based invoice report that looks like this. Specifically, I demonstrate how to extract the period field from the invoice and assign it to a date column in the dataset, allowing cost trend analysis across multiple invoices. The best part is that this solution works seamlessly in both Power BI and Excel. Let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. A few weeks ago, my colleague faced a similar issue and asked for a bit of a help in setting up a report that contains all invoices and allows easy cost tracking. I'm sure many of you have received or are still receiving data in similar format. This could be division name, branch location or any other field, but essentially it resembles a pivot table format. Whether it's a date field or any other relevant information for the entire report, it can be challenging to assign that to a column value. Currently, you might manually complete the task of assigning the cell value to the core report in Excel by copy-pasting value. However, with today's trick, you no longer need to do that. So if you are ready, I reckon we can start. As I mentioned in the intro, let's imagine that we receive a monthly invoice like the one shown from our facility management company. I have prepared six time invoices for the first six months of 2023 from January to June. Currently, I'm showing you a few examples. The structure remains consistent across all the invoices with an image at the top followed by the period or date and itemized invoice details below. Some invoices have three line items, while others have more. Now let's move on to Power BI. We will import these invoices from a folder and create a report for the invoice lines. If you are unsure about how to get files from a folder and automatically combine them, I will include a tutorial in the description below. You can also find the link at the top right corner of the video. Now we can compare the cost of each item and determine which one costs us the most. However, there is no easy way to visualize the trend line across the month. This is where some of you might have manually copied the date from the invoice and placed it either to the left or the right of the invoice line items. While this method works, it introduces a manual step for each report, whereas this process could be fully automated. Let's explore how to achieve that. I would suggest leaving the transform sample file intact and creating a duplicate table for making changes. Let's go back to one of the initial steps called navigation. What we see here is the raw version of the data before any row or column deletions have been applied. The date field is located in column 6, row 11, and this will be the case for all other files as well. Watch what happens when I right click on the cell and select add as new query. This action creates a single value which represents our date. Take a look at the M code in the formula bar. The code states that the value is equal to the 11th record from the column called column 6. In Power Query, numbering starts from 0, so when we see 10 in this example, it actually refers to the 11th row. The same principle applies when referencing sheets in Excel file. Instead of referencing sheet number 1, we need to reference sheet number 0 to indicate the first sheet. Why today we are only going to use this add as new query method is also worth noting that Power Query has some really powerful record functions. If you would like to read about them, I'll add the link to the info box below. But how can we retrieve this value and populate it as a column once all the other data transformation steps are completed? Well, here comes another little known Power Query trick. We can add the step in M without needing to use it as a reference for the next step or in this particular example, start from the previous step. Let's return to the second transformed sample file and open the advanced editor. The logic here is that a new data transformation step will reference the previous step. So when I promoted the headers, it started from the filtered rows step and so on. However, if needed, 
I can easily insert a line called get date and make it equal to the value obtained from the new query. Once I click the done button, nothing happens. This is great because it means all the other steps remain intact and I haven't introduced any errors to the code. But hey, the goal is to add that date as a column and now it's going to be super easy. Click on add column and select custom column. Name the column as date and simply type get date as the formula. And look at that. We have now assigned the period's single cell value to a column called date. Lastly, change the format of the date column to date. There you go, another quick power query tip. It is possible to reduce the number of data transformation steps in a query by combining certain steps together. In this example, instead of using the UI to change the type from unknown to date, I relied on the step of adding a new column. Within that step, I defined the data type of the newly created column. If this information is new to you, feel free to hit the like button. The only remaining task for us is to copy and paste the code into the original transform sample file and remove the other two working queries. Once that is done, our invoices table will contain the description, unit price, quantity, total cost and date columns. This means that we can now close Power Query and apply these new steps. Returning to our canvas, we can add the date field to the line chart. And there you have it. We have successfully achieved the cost trend analysis across multiple months. In this demo, I used the date field as an example. However, for many of you, it could be other fields such as division name, branch location, or any other data that comes in a pivot table-like format. The good news is that the logic I showcased can be easily replicated for any of these scenarios. It's simply a matter of selecting the specific field you want to extract and assign it to a column to enhance your reporting. Applying this trick could mean that you can streamline manual tasks that you may currently be doing and move towards creating fully automated reporting processes. Please note that this tutorial is about demoing some Power Query tricks, so I did not bother creating a calendar table. However, it is important to highlight that when working with time-based comparisons, it is crucial to have a calendar table in place. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that the techniques and tricks to showcase today are applicable and replicable in both Power BI and Excel. The power of Power Query can be leveraged in both platforms. With that said, it's time for your questions and comments. As always, please use the comment section below if you are unsure about something I covered today. I'll do my best to provide quick answers to your questions. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you like this video, so please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials, like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.